In this tutorial, I want to show you two forbidden techniques on how you can work with texture in Premiere Pro. Before we start, let's watch a microfilm where these techniques have been used quite heavily. Let's go. Before we start, when you want to learn how to do advanced color grading using the same system as they use in Hollywood and Netflix, there's a free training underneath this video in the description, my free training. In this training, I will show you how you can use the same system as they use in Hollywood and Netflix to match your footage to any movie reference. And I will show you how you can use the system, this system and the power of this system to color grade and color correct your footage like you would have shot your footage in RAW, even if your camera doesn't shoot RAW footage. So check that free training underneath this video right now or after this tutorial. So let's start with the tutorial. So first of all, why are these techniques forbidden? Well, they are not really forbidden, That's just that is just my way of getting you here, but it's really good that you're here because these techniques are not really talked about on YouTube. So maybe it's forbidden to talk about this on YouTube. But anyway, these are techniques you can't really find on YouTube and these are heavily used on movie and TV show grading. So this could be like the last step of getting you where you really want to be with your footage. So here in Premiere Pro, we have a clip that I've done quite a lot of texture work with and let's turn off the texture work and here is the same clip without texture work. So here's texture work and here's without texture work. So let me now show you two techniques and one extra technique uh, how you can do this in Premiere Pro. So let's jump into the first technique. So the first technique is to add uh, textures and work with textures by working with contrast. And let me explain to you uh, how this works. Here we have uh, the uh, Lumetriscope, so this uh, waveform, and this blob on the left represents this blue wall, the dark wall, and this blob here on the right represents this bright wall. And whenever we add contrast to our footage, uh, the place where our pivot point is, that is where the neighboring pixels are emphasized to each other. The luminance difference between neighboring pixels are emphasized. So uh, for example, here in the shadows, if I go and add an RGB curves effect, RGB curves, put it on the clip, let's go back to the Lumetriscopes and let's add the pivot point around this blob. So this area, and that's about 20. So let's put a pivot point somewhere here and let's add contrast by bringing the highlights, well, the brighter brighter uh, parts up and the darker, uh, darker parts down. And now when I turn this effect on and off, you can see how it's really emphasizing the textures on this area because that's where the pivot point is. And then if we would, let's uh, reset this. If we would now use the pivot point on this bright area, so that would be around 70 something. So let's click there and let's bring darker things down and brighter things up, something like that. And now when you turn it, when we turn it on and off, you can really see how the textures are being emphasized. But now this is the million dollar question. Well, maybe not million dollar, but let, let's say that uh, a question of some worth is how we can do this simultaneously for both areas. Because we cannot add contrast to highlights and contrast to shadow areas. At the same time, how can we, well, do this simultaneously for both areas? Well, actually, we can add contrast to both areas at the same time. And that is done with tonal masks. Tone masks or tonal masks. I guess it's the same thing, tone masks. And that you can actually find right here in the same effect, RGB curves, if you scroll down, you can find this magical tool called secondary color corrections. And let's click show mask. You have the hue, saturation and luma. And we, let's go to luma. And let's bring this lighter down somewhere there. And now black areas are not affected. White areas are affected. Let's bring this down somewhere there. Let's have a good gradient like this. So now we have a bit of a gradient between the, so the uh, difference is not so apparent. Let's use the end, soft, end softness. And this is very important to use this because otherwise this uh, tone mask doesn't really work. So let's have, let's say like 20. And now let's turn off the mask visibility. And now whatever we do to this curve, 
it will only affect the dark areas. So now we can do the same thing that we did earlier. Let's add contrast by bringing the darks darker and brights brighter. Let's play around with it, whatever, however we like. And there you go. We emphasize the texture on the shadow areas. And this is actually really, really good when you want to kind of show more of your shadows and show like more like make it more, make the shadows more visible without making them brighter by adding texture there. And let's rename this one and let's call it shadow texture. And now let's do the same thing for the highlights. So let's duplicate this command C, uh, command V. So now we have duplicated it, but let's reset this curve. Let's go to the mask and let's click here, invert, and then invert mask. And now when I show it, the white area is going to be affected. The black area is not going to be affected. And now we can go and do the same thing that we did in the beginning. We can work with the texture on the highlight areas, something like this. And there you go. We're working with the texture. And here's without and here's with. Without, with. So that's a nice way of working with texture by adding texture by uh, to like add, how would I say placing a pivot point to the tonal area where you want to add texture and then adding contrast to that area. And if you want to do it to both areas at the same time, I mean shadows and highlights, you use these tone maps. Now let's go to the next technique. This next technique is a bit more advanced and it gives you a different look, but sometimes this just, just looks so good. Um, I'm not going to explain you exactly what is happening here because this is quite complicated, but I will just give you an overview. I'm going to create an extra texture layer. So I'm going to create a layer that has just a texture. And then when we have that, we can kind of blend it with the original footage in many different ways. So let's first create this texture layer. And to do that, again, I'm not going to explain why or like how this is done because that would take way too long. Just follow me. You duplicate the uh, layer, the footage. You put it on top of the same, uh, at the same place. So it's basically let's just uh, torta po torta, as they say in Swedish. And then you remove attributes and remove all your color grades and everything, just uh, everything that just affects the color. Uh, but don't make sure that the pixels stay in the same place. For example, if you have warp stabilization or something like that, make sure that the pixels are on the same spot, but just remove all the color effects on it from it. Then you nest it and let's call it texture. Let's go inside it. Let's bring this to the bottom layer uh, track. You go to project, well, just need to, well, you go to project and you create an adjustment layer. You bring the adjustment layer on top of your footage, trim it to the right length. You go to effects and you find invert, a video effects, channel invert. And then you go to FX control and then you use this blend mode and use vivid light. And now everything went like gray. And if we please update, the, yeah, there we go. Now we can see the Lumetri scope. You can see that there's a flat trace on 50% gray. So this is now 50% gray layer and we can't really do anything with this. But when we go to effects, add blur and let's use Gaussian blur. And now look what will happen when we start uh, blurring this. We are starting to see something. And when you look at the Lumetri scope uh, trace, if it would just update, thank you, Premiere. Yes, there we go. It took some time. Uh, you can see that the average is still hovering there at 50% uh, uh, luminance. So it's middle gray. And this is now perfect because this is basically a layer that is our texture. This is a texture layer. It doesn't really have color. Well, it has color here. Uh, it, that's actually important as well, but it's basically just gray layer that has just the texture. The shadows are the same brightness as the highlights. So there's, uh, there's just the texture. And now we can start adding and blending this to our footage and working with it and emphasizing the texture. So let's go to the main comp. Let's click this texture layer and let's select overlay or soft light, depending on the uh, situation. One of them looks good, and I think overlay looks quite good now. 
So if I turn this on and off, you can see how it's really emphasizing our textures. And you can actually see it in our waveform as well. For example, here in this shadow, this shadow blob, that is this darker wall is represented by this blob, and this brighter wall is represented by this blob. When I turn this texture layer on and off, you can see how these blobs are getting thicker. And that's basically that the neighboring pixels are being emphasized uh, to each other. So let's turn it on. And now we have a lot of control over our kind of this uh, texture layer. If we go inside, first of all, you can change the blurriness. If it's very low, then it looks more like sharpening and it's really high. For example, let's add it uh, 50. It has almost like a touch and burn effect on your footage. So that's a quite nice way of like creating a texture layer and then blending it on top of your footage and then like that will kind of add uh, the texture to your footage. But there are a few problems that I want to uh, like help you like help you remedy. And the first one is that when this technique is emphasizing all the luminance differences between all the pixels. So when you look at this, it's actually emphasizing the noise. Maybe not so much in this case, but sometimes very annoyingly it's adding a lot of noise. So to re remedy that, you just add another caution blur to this texture layer inside the main comp then add a bit of blur, like let's say 5%, something like this. And now it's still emphasizing the textures, but it's not emphasizing the blur. And then another thing that you want, or you might want to do, actually you could do this for the first uh, first technique as well, but let me just show you that this is this like, um, like advanced masking technique. Because when you add texture, especially when you add it to skin, it emphasizes all the imperfections and the shininess and all kind of nastiness of the skin. That might be something you want to do, but if it's a beauty shot, like I guess this is kind of, it doesn't really look good. So how can we uh, reduce this effect, this texture effect from skin tone areas? And to do that, I'm gonna show you the next technique. So now I'm gonna show you this advanced masking technique with which you can protect your skin tones when you're working with, well, it basically works with whatever. You can have an adjustment layer and use this technique for that as well. But anyway, uh, to do this, you select the uh, original footage, you duplicate it on top, and then you go to Lumetri Color, you go to HSL Secondaries, you select white and black, and you turn the mask on, turn these off, and let's just find our skin tones here. Like, there we go, there's our skin tones. We were quite kind of lucky that there was pretty much nothing else similar to skin tones. A bit of this wall was there, but this is good enough and it doesn't, the mask can be really sloppy. Let's add a bit of blur, something like this, and then let's invert it. So we created an, a layer, this click, click, uh, clip here is a layer where our skin tones are black and everything else is white. And this is actually what we want. We want to create a layer that uh, tells for uh, this software, what is this, Premiere Pro, to not apply the effect on black areas and not uh, and apply it to white areas. And that effect is called track mat. Track mat key, apparently. So put this on your texture layer, go to your effects control, select video three in this case, because that's where are uh, this black and white um, like layer is. And then you go composite using mat luma. And now you can see how we are adding texture everywhere else, but not the skin tone area. And you could as well use uh, like an extra mask. For example, place this mask just on this wall, or maybe it's just an area of the wall. And you can use the combination of this track mat by having this layer that was black and white, black where we don't want to affect the skin tones, for example in this case, and white where we want. And then you can as well uh, use like masks on this. So that's a very nice handy way of uh, kind of adding contrast. And now we have two ways of adding contrast. This is the contrast method, and it looks like this. And then we have this local contrast, and it has a bit different effect but sometimes the local contrast looks much better than the contrast method. And uh, well, you can mix and match them as much as you want. 
Okay, so those were the techniques that you can use to work with texture. And now that we're done with this tutorial, I recommend you to go and check the free training underneath this video in the description. And there's a link floating around my head as well, where you can go and check the a free training that I mentioned, where I'm going to show you how you can use the same power, use the same system as they use in Hollywood and Netflix to color grade your footage as well, and match your footage to any movie reference. So go and check that out. And uh, see you in the next tutorial. Bye.